In this unit, we start with the most basic simple harmonic oscillator, a horizontal spring mass system with no friction. The spring is a Hooke's Law spring with a spring constant k. Let's say we move this box here and then let it go. The box would oscillate back and forth between these two endpoints, symmetrically about the equilibrium position. And what is special about the equilibrium position? At the equilibrium position, the net force on the box is zero. This means that the spring must be relaxed, which means that the stretch and press or the compressed amount x is zero. If we have to describe its motion after we set it into oscillation by finding its position as a function of time, what do you think we have to do? We have to start with the net force equals to ma. This is what we usually do in mechanics if we have to describe the motion of an object. Because if we know the initial condition and we know the acceleration, we can figure out how the object would move. While the box is in oscillation, let's say when the box is uh, over here, the net force on the box would be the spring's force because the mg is canceled by the normal force and there is no friction so what's left on the box that's not canceled is the spring's force so the force from the spring kx equals to ma in order to describe the motion of the box correctly we must get the direction of the force right the spring's force is a restoring force so we must use the, the negative sign here for the negative kx because if the box moves to the right of the equilibrium position, the spring's force pulls it back to the left, opposite to the direction of x. So now we have one equation, but two unknowns, x and a. If we have one equation, we would like to have one unknown, so we can solve for the one unknown. This means we need to substitute one of these two in terms of the other. How are x and a related? How can we write one of these in terms of the other? We know that if we take time derivative of position, we get velocity, and that the time derivative of velocity is acceleration. So if we take time derivative of x twice, we get a. If you haven't learned this in your math class, this is how we write the second or double derivative. We write the squared kind of thing here and there, not here and here. I think this is because this whole thing d dt is considered an operation. So when we do this operation twice, we write the squared kind of thing out here and there. So now we can substitute a with this second derivative of x and we get this equation. It is not a normal algebraic equation. It has derivative in there. It is what we call a differential equation. To solve this differential equation for x as a function of time, we have to integrate. But for this course, I don't think you will be asked to solve this second order differential equation. However, you may be asked to write this differential equation. In that case, you would start with the f equals to ma and then turn it into a differential equation just like this. Now, since we're not going to solve this differential equation, we're just going to guess the answer. Obviously, this box is going to oscillate back and forth, so the solution has to be a function that oscillates. And according to this differential equation, if we don't worry about the constant coefficients k and m, we can see that after we take two time derivatives of the position, we get the negative of the original function. What kind of oscillating functions can satisfy this? It's a sine or cosine. If you haven't learned these in your math class, you just have to remember them. When we take derivative of sine theta, what do we get? We get cosine theta. When we take derivative of cosine theta, we get 
negative sine theta. So if we start with the sine, after two derivatives, we get the negative of the original function. What if we start with cosine? That's one derivative. If we take one more derivative, we have to take the derivative of the negative sign. Then we get a negative states right there. And then when we take the derivative of sine theta, we get a cosine theta. So if we start with cosine, after two derivatives, we get the negative of the original function. So the general solution for this differential equation is either a cosine or a sine kind of function. What coefficient do you think we should multiply this cosine by? It is the amplitude. Amplitude is the distance between the equilibrium and the end point. We use capital A or x max for amplitude. Because the cosine or sine function oscillates between 1 and negative 1, while the oscillator oscillates between negative amplitude and positive amplitude, by multiplying the cosine by amplitude, we get a function that oscillates between negative and positive amplitude. What goes here is omega t plus phi. The omega is like angular velocity. The phi is called the phase constant. If an object is doing constant angular velocity motion, the angle traveled in a time t would be velocity times time omega t. This phase constant is like the initial angle. Initial angle phi plus the angle traveled omega t gives us the angle for our cosine or sine function. Of course, the simple harmonic oscillator is not really rotating, so in this case, uh, we call the omega angular frequency instead of angular velocity. We will find out what omega is very soon. Let's say our position as a function of time is this cosine function. How can we find the velocity as a function of time? we have to take dx dt. When we take the derivative of this, the constant coefficient amplitude stays the same. Then we have to take the time derivative of cosine omega t plus phi. We know how to take the derivative of cosine if uh, these two are exactly the same. However, Right now, we have omega t plus phi over here, but uh, we want dt over here. Because these two are not the same in our derivative, we have to use this thing called the chain rule to take care of it. Because we know how to take derivative when these two are the same, that means uh, we need down here to be exactly the same as the omega t plus phi up there. Of course, uh, they are not equal, so to fix it, we have to do this. We have to multiply this by d omega t plus phi dt. It's kind of like multiplying two fractions. It's like these two, they cancel, so this is exactly the same as uh, what we had before. Now we can take the derivative. For this part, the phi is a constant. So when we take the derivative of a constant, we get 0. And then when we take the derivative of this, the omega is the constant coefficient stays right there. When we take the derivative of dt, dt, we get 1. And then on this side, when we take the derivative of cosine theta, d theta, we get negative sine theta. So here we will get negative sine theta would be the omega t plus phi. So the derivative of the cosine omega t plus phi gives us a negative sine. And what goes here is exactly the same as what's up there, omega t plus phi. And because of the chain rule, this term in the chain rule, we have to multiply by an omega on the side. So this is our velocity as a function of time. What if we want to find the acceleration as a function of time? We would have to take one more derivative. 
And when we take derivative, this uh, constant coefficient will stay the same. And then we have to take derivative of the sine. When we take derivative of sine, we get cosine. And because we have to use the chain rule again, we're going to get another omega on the side. So this is going to become cosine. And what goes here is exactly the same, omega t plus phi. And because of the chain rule, we have to multiply by another omega. Because the sine and the cosine, they oscillate between 1 and negative 1. This means uh, the velocity would oscillate between negative this much and the positive this much. This means uh, omega times the amplitude is the maximum speed. Same thing over here. Acceleration would oscillate between negative this much and positive this much. That means uh, the maximum acceleration is omega squared times the amplitude, or omega times the maximum speed. You shall find that uh, these are very useful for problems we will be solving in this course. We now have the position as a function of time and the acceleration as a function of time. If we plug them back into this equation, negative kx equals to ma, we will be able to figure out what omega is. So negative kx equals to ma, and that will be negative k times the x is uh, amplitude times cosine omega t plus phi. And that equals to m times the acceleration, which is uh, negative omega squared times amplitude times cosine omega t plus phi. So the negative negative cancels, the amplitude cosine they cancel, which means that k equals to m times omega squared. So if you solve for omega, we will find that the omega is the square root of k over m. If this is an object doing uniform circular motion at constant angular velocity omega, the period of the circular motion would be 2 pi over omega. Period is the time it takes for the object to go around one circle. 2 pi is the angular distance traveled in one circle, and omega is the angular speed. Angular distance traveled divided by the angular speed gives us the time it takes. So if I do 2 pi divided by that omega, I would get 2 pi square root of uh, m over k. And if you remember, this equation is the period we used last year for a spring mass oscillator.